Do you know what it takes to keep a 25-year-old CNC machine running? 90% of what I do is simple. You could come in and do it. The other 10%, let me save you the headache. Come along with me, let's go to Alaska and I'll show you a real life example of an old machine that needed some service. So if you're out in the boonies and you have an old machine, you could fix it yourself just like we did. Let's go. I'm the CNC repairman. I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls is full of power. Hey Josh, Aaron here. You've got a Haas machine in Alaska. Yes, I do. Straight out of 1994. Crazy. I graduated. And where are you located? Juneau, Alaska. Are there any roads there? <laughs> We're landlocked. So what, what was that like? It was probably crazy deciding to buy a machine and take it home. I'm kinda used to getting stuff up here. Everything comes up by barge or by airplane. It doesn't feel like 3.30 in the morning, but it is. So to start with, somebody messaged and said, hey, I want you to work on my machine. I said, all right, I need all the info, company, et cetera, et cetera, and what's wrong with it. Going to work on a machine in the middle of nowhere. So I loaded up a ton of parts, tried to figure out, okay, what may break, what is currently failing, so I could take all these parts with me. Get it going. Yeah, buddy. I'm here with Josh from Arc Industries and we're in Juneau, Alaska, and we just finished up doing the maintenance on this machine. So tell me a little bit about what it's like to run a machine shop here in Alaska. Oh, well, uh, it's not very busy. <laughs> a lot of repair work, job shop work, um, stuff like that, but uh, yeah, it's good action. Very good. Well, we did a number of things on this, some maintenance. We did a ball bar. You learned a little bit about how to maintain your own machine. Oh yeah, it's good to have all the knowledge and uh, how fast he is. Man, a hard worker, you're gonna get every uh, cent out of the money you spend over here, man. Very good, well, if you wanna check out more about what Josh gets up to here in Alaska, check out his Instagram channel. CNC Alaska. So check out CNC Alaska on Instagram if you wanna know more of what he's doing. And hope you enjoyed this video and you'll get to see just what we troubleshot and how we fixed it. Very Roger. good. thank you. Gotta make some room to clean the way cover. And get the door shut again. God, every time you feel something, like the lamest little big ass song comes on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice job. Probably has some fishing gear on. When you're a field service tech, what you do before a job, you look up the manuals, you bring any checklists, you look up any parts, you make sure that you have the right tools to work on it, if there's service procedures. So all of those things are prep before you ever even go to do the job. That's what it takes to be a field service tech. Long story short, you got the machine, took it up there on a barge, set it up in your garage, and it's it's been running well. I mean, can have you got any nightmare stories from it? I mean, I came up and we went over it. I feel like it's it's good for another twenty five years. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, I I never after I ran it for a couple of years, the frequency drive went out, and that's when I really when the thing went down you were my first call and then uh you put one on an airplane i had it the same day and uh swapped it out and yeah it was all good you know it's so fresh and so clean and then since then i just wanted to kind of like get a welfare check on the thing to see what i'm really dealing with is this thing worth ever spending any more money on it or should i run it into the ground and that's when i flew you up yeah i i had a great time it was it was a blast working with you and coming up there. I, I'm really glad we did, because I feel like we saved the X-axis cable and cleaned out the motors and did a bunch of stuff. Snow's deep out here. What are we doing? It's cooking. A little chicken on the Traeger. Going back inside.
It's really hard to film myself with a camera and work down inside of the machine. I'm going to show you what I did on Josh's machine with some pictures and some video because it's easier and more relaxed here. The x-axis cable was one of the first things I suspected and we found that was bad. He had the weight covers pulled back and cleaned out which saves a bunch of time. See this cable, it literally drags inside of here whatever x goes back and forth. That's the x cable. Comes from the back, goes up, underneath, and then all the way over to the x motor. His was pretty worn and what will happen is it will short out and blow the amplifier. Really good idea to put a new cable in, 25 years of it dragging. Doesn't leave a lot left in the insulation and the coolant and the oil to eat it up. With that in mind, the servo motors, they, they wear out. Now if you have DC servo motors, there are brushes inside of them. You can pull the brushes out, vacuum out the carbon. That'll make it for quite a while. Here's the cable, the encoder, the power plug. The cable is kind of clamped all the way down inside the X, goes through a hole in the center, wraps around, and goes out the back. Some more things we did on his machine to just check the maintenance and the overall life is we checked the grip force. So we've got a video about that. Unclamp the tool, pop it in. This will read how many pounds of force pulls up on the pole stud against the taper. A good machine will have 1,500 to 2,000. A poor drawbar that's damaged could be 200 or less. That's really important for your finish of your parts, for the life of your spindle, for your taper, the life of your tools and your tooling. So you want to check the grip force if you have an old machine and be sure the spindle is in good shape. Looking overall at a machine like Josh's, the way cover wipers were in good condition, the ways covers were in good condition, and the linear rails. We replaced the plugs in his machine for both X, Y, and Z that keeps chips out. We made sure the bolts were tight, the cam bolts were over, buttoned up the way covers when we were done and made sure the home switches were in good shape, the lube line for X and Y and the metering units were in good shape. We made sure that the wiper on the back of the Y axis is kind of a big deal because coolant will go all the way out, drain onto your Y axis motor and you could damage your Y axis motor. So we put a new wiper in here, we checked underneath the Z axis way cover to make sure that there weren't chips packed inside there every time the Z comes down. Watch out here. We worked on his tool changer. He already had it out when I got there which was great. Pulling it's kind of a pain, there's chips, there's coolant. He replaced springs underneath inside of here so much easier to work on a machine without the sheet metal the trap doors the fingers there was a few things on his umbrella plate that were damaged so he's happy now he's got new trap doors to keep chips from getting inside and the tools aren't getting moved around or getting clamped with a bunch of chips on them let's go up top well, you have a couple of switches inside of here and a couple of switches inside of here this is the motor that runs the carousel these are pretty low duty cycle. I don't see these fail. Come around and we're going to look at this side. My machine's a bit messy, but it doesn't have chips and coolant. He didn't need a new motor in his machine, but if you have shuttle fault problems, just replace the motor. We check the cables inside and look at this. This coolant hose does not have a lot of life left in it. We stopped at a little convenience general store there right off of the airport in Juneau, went in ordered some hose from the guy, he cut it off the roll and Josh was like, how many feet? And I was like, oh, 20 will be more than enough. It was like just barely long enough to reach the coolant tank. So get yourself 25 feet. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you have to pull the hose through the cable track all the way down and then, let's see, come around. Right here, this is pretty brittle and it goes up through there. If that hose breaks when it's hot or when it's cold and it doesn't want to flex, you're now pouring coolant over your motor, over your motor. It might even drain back into your electrical cabinet. So for a $30 hose, f fix the hose. That's a real easy maintenance item to do on an old machine. Since I'm up here on Josh's machine, he has had some tool changer problems where it would come down and it wouldn't orientate. It, it would hang up and wait. And so we replaced both clamp and unclamp switches, which are missing here. We replaced the tool release piston solenoid, the quick exhaust valve, and we did some more stuff all climb around up top. But what's funny is we, were, we had intermittent tool changer problems and we weren't sure what the issue was. So we just said, you know what, new switches, new solenoids, and I don't think he's had tool changer problems since. So those little pesky annoying things, 
Don't, don't monkey with them. Just put new parts in and, and move on. Let me climb around. With the head cover off, which is kind of an ordeal, don't break your tool release switch, the one that unclamps the tool in the front. We have a video about how to do it, but just be gentle when you pull the head cover off. We can look up here, and my parts machine is missing stuff. We replaced the encoder pulleys, the belts, the shot pin O-ring. I also did the gear shift solenoids that makes it shift between high and low gear, engages the shot pin. That's a whole assembly you can get. Way easier to work on your machine for planned downtime than it is for, oh no, I got a problem. I'm in the middle of nowhere. UPS doesn't deliver till 4 p.m. and you gotta wait for overnight parts. Just have some stuff on hand or do a little maintenance. Let me climb down and let's look at the back. Opening up the electrical cabinet might seem daunting. There's a lot of wires here. I'll show you what I did on Josh's machine and if you wanna learn more, I've got a video just about checking voltages and what all the components do. Here's the backup battery right here. This might be three boards deep. So you have to pull the boards off and pull the connectors off. This backs up your parameters and your settings. If it goes dead, your machine's not gonna turn on and work. You have to have it all reloaded. So check your backup battery. We have a video about that. Put in a battery board. You could plug it in right there. Then you can replace the battery. We ohmed out and megged his motors. They didn't read brand new, but they didn't read fail. So he's good to go for, I check the motors every year until they start to read like they're failing. So a megger, pull those wires, meg those motors. Just look, okay, this is an older power supply. At some point that's gonna need to be failed. Visually, in your machine, you might have some newer boards, some older boards, a vector drive, but wipe up the bottom, check the fans that are keeping the air flow things like power supplies and breakers, just to know what's back here. And if this is old and like caked with dirt and dust, okay, put some money in the bank. You're probably gonna have to have this rebuilt or repaired or a new one at some point, just to give you that gut feeling of my machine's gonna break or no, my machine's in good shape. Josh's machine, Josh's machine was in good shape for being as old as it is. Here's where the RS-232 connection would plug in, where the XYZ and the auger motors and the coolant pump plugs in. That is also an important thing. You need to back up the parameters, either via RS-232 or you need to back them up via floppy. So you need to have a cable, an RS-232 converter, or a floppy. That's important to do if you're backing up or changing the battery. That's pretty much everything we looked at except for one thing, the ball bar. Let me grab the ball bar and show you what it's like. This is the Renishaw ball bar. Probably the one thing that you don't need to buy and that it's not gonna benefit you. They're expensive and they're a really cool tool. This sits in a cup in the spindle and this sits in a cup on the table and it's like a linear scale or a pair of calipers and you run a circle and then it feeds back wirelessly to your computer and tells you exactly how nice the circle was. Backlash issues, linear comp, friction comp, scaling problems, squareness issues, reversal spikes, lots of things. This thing is accurate to plus or minus 40 million. So I'm gonna see everything and we can set it up to run a 100 millimeter ball bar, a 50 millimeter tiny little one, or 150, 200 I think, or 300. You could do a pretty big circular circle. So the benefit of this is it tells me quickly, is the machine level? Is the machine square? Is there a linear compensation problem? What's the backlash? What's the reversal spikes? If you know you're cutting good parts, if you can cut a circle and it's within five tenths, ball bar isn't gonna benefit you a whole lot. If you wanna know the condition of your machine or you're concerned you have a finish problem or chatter problem, something when you change directions, this is where this tool comes into play. Josh's machine, I think, was four and a half or five tenths. Really good for an old machine. That means the ball screws are in good shape, the end cap bearings are in good shape, the motors, the servo system, nothing's loose, the linear rails aren't loose, the head isn't crooked, or X and Z aren't crooked, X and Y aren't crooked to each other. Cool tool to have, very beneficial, but not necessary. This is the QC20, it's wireless. I've talked to some guys who bought the old wired ones on eBay for pretty cheap. The confusing part is they don't know how to run them and then they're confused and they think their machine is bad when really it's good. So this tool, I would say, unless you're gonna get it and run it all the time, isn't gonna benefit you a whole lot. Have someone come in and run this tool if you suspect there's a problem. This tool can also be run on a lathe. I'll show you real quick. This sits in the spindle and then this sits in the X turret and you can do a circle in XZ. 
So more videos about this to come. This was the one thing that probably isn't going to benefit you if you have a machine. You can do some other things like checking level or the geometry with a regular machinist level. Or you can do a spindle sweep where you bring the head down and you check the tram kind of like you would on a bridge port. Those two combination measurements are going to tell you the condition of a machine, whether you're looking at a machine that's used to purchase or whether you just want to check your home machine because you're cutting some bad parts. Josh said he had all sorts of troubles with that first hobby CNC machine he had. If I had run the ball bar, it probably would have looked horrible. So don't, don't get something and chase yourself in a tail thinking you're the problem. Their machine might have an issue. And in that case, you need to have it looked at by someone who knows what they're doing or do a bunch of research online and try to figure out is there a problem with my machine that's causing my parts to be out. That's the head scratcher. And a lot of times when I get called is to go help people figure out I don't understand my machine. I don't understand why I'm making bad parts. And in that case, could be a bad servo motor. Or you're getting an alarm and you have a bad servo cable. Or your tool changer isn't working because your piston is sticky. Lots of things can cause issues that become annoying. And, and I want to come in and help you fix your machine so you can see what it's like and do all of this yourself and talk to us, get service help, get parts, rent tools. We rent this grip force meter for pretty cheap so that you can check easily yourself, hey, do I need a new drawbar instead of having to buy a $1,200 drawbar tool. That's the whole story of why I went to go see Josh, help him on his machine. He just wanted that confidence, that kind of know a service tech type feeling and is my machine in a good condition. Most of these older VF2, VF3 machines, even, even the lathes, the SLs or the HLs, they're in good condition if they're kept up and people know how to operate them and know the capabilities of the machine. If you're going to try to get an old machine and cut really tight tolerant parts, going to be hard. Going to be hard. You may want to get a newer machine. So that's my take on servicing 25 year old machines. If you need help with your machines, if you want to see more about how to work on your machine, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. We've got maintenance checklists, install checklists, all sorts of help and parts available. We ship overnight daily and keep watching for more fun content. So Josh is trying to get me to the airport. Great guy and uh, we got stuck in the driveway. So I told him, well, just give me a shovel. And he goes, I got a big shovel. That's a big shovel. Go big or go home. I do both. <laughs> You're not going home today. No. <laughs> So what happened, we didn't plow during the day. My flight got delayed and delayed and delayed. And then we tried to leave to go work on one of Josh's customers at the airport because there's some issues at the airport that I'm supposed to fly out of. And then we got the plow truck stuck in the driveway. And I was like, yeah, we just get a shovel. He's like, I got a big shovel. And that is a huge shovel. That is, that is just a sweet machine. Man. Yeah, we're stuck. So instead of trying to pull it out, I didn't even think about this. Josh just actually picked up the truck. Just like, like, like the wheel was right there. He just picked up the whole thing and then just set it down over here, which pretty sharp idea. He's going to go put the shovel away now. It was good and stuck. Looks like uh, we're going to be heading to the airport now. Bad day just got worse. 